G'day folks. Well, I've had a whole bunch of questions over the years about what to salvage from the scrapyard regarding um, electrical equipment and sort of what to look out for and honestly I've never really done a full video on it but my best answer is control panels. I mean you'll find all kinds of other electrical stuff there. It's a matter of what you're really looking for. What do you want to do with it? I can't tell you what to do with it. It's up to you what you want to do with it but when it comes to like the real gold of the scrapyard, my favourite is control boxes. Like this one here, and I've got a bunch outside. Some still attached to machinery. And you'll see in a minute just why I go to lengths to get them. And when you're dealing with a scrapyard that basically sees things as, like this would basically be scrap iron at about one or two cents a kilogram. And given how little there is there, well, I throw the owner 10 bucks and he's more than happy for it because Hey, there's no guarantee anything in here is going to work. It may have had water or corrosive salts or acid residue or something go through it. And B, it's just going to end up in the pressings pile because it's just been cut and ripped out of the machine. And it's just going in the steel pile. So if he can get 10, 20 bucks or something for something which is going to basically net him $2 otherwise, that's a win. And that's where I encourage anyone, get to know your scrapyard guys, get to know their rates, that kind of thing. A lot of places I realise don't allow you to rummage around. They might put things aside and expect way more money than they're worth, in which case I just advise walk away or keep an eye on it until, at least until you're sure they're willing to mark it down. Because a lot of places will. They'll realise that something's been sitting on the shelf for months and no one's interested in it because it's too high. And that's where you go up and make a cheap offer. Give them 10 bucks for it, 20 bucks for it. Especially if you know what's inside, like variable frequency drives. These are basically my gold. These are, these are, probably my favorite thing to find in the scrap yard because you combine this with this a three-phase motor which can be wired in delta you take little bridge plates from across the top and wire them parallel 240 delta 240 delta you have a nice variable speed motor combo that you can use to run a lathe a water pump uh, a milling machine like that whatever <laughs> whatever you want to do an air compressor even nice soft start air compressor with variable control these are sort of my gold and if you know what's inside the cabinet you don't necessarily have to tell them or just tell them I want this con controller or this kind of thing and chances are they don't give a crap about what it is they just want to know what it weighs or if you just wave them 10 or 20 bucks they don't care because they're not going to take the time to sell it anyway not like it is they're not going to go and list this on eBay you go to somewhere like HDR incorporated in Ohio USA yeah, they have people working there that sort of know what things are. Uh, a friend and I routinely go through the posts on that one just for the shits and giggles. And um, yeah, some of the stuff they're asking ridiculous money for when it's worth next to nothing. Some of it is an absolute bargain, especially if it's been sitting on the shelf for too long. So I advise, keep an eye on your local surplus place and your local scrapyard and just get to know them. Keep bringing stuff in. Bring stuff in as a customer sell it for scrap and just talk to them and say hey is there any chance we can work out deals for stuff that you have in exchange for stuff that I have or just cash cash talks I mean whether it's really old stuff like this control card out of an injection molding machine not so practical for the people these days but again I grabbed it because I could um, the other things you'll find in control cabinets which is sort of what this video is about what, what, what do you expect to find in control cabinets in particular that was the main question what do I get out of control boxes and because people often see them they're still closed up they're probably still locked what's inside well they all vary I don't think I've ever had two industrial automation cabinets that are the same outside of like known specific manufacturers contactors three phase plus a um, neutral or a um, auxiliary contact relays this one's got a 24 volt uh, AC coil in it so low voltage, high current switching capacity, just a bigger version of uh, this little guy. I think it's locked in there, but that's a little cube relay there. 12 amp, 250 volt, 24 volt coil. So you get relays, you get these nice little barrier strips. The other next thing you'll find a lot, a lot, and I'm well overstocked in them, is uh, circuit breakers. This is a, so they've written over the top, I think it's like a 6 amp circuit breaker. This is a three phase, yeah, 10 amp, 10 amps per phase supply. And there's a, yeah, two pole six amp. 
Let me just trace where they're going. See, this one's going to the um, 24 volt 5 amp power supply, so it's a little switch mode power supply, metal cased heat sunk power supply. Pretty damn good quality. Most of the stuff you'll find in these boxes, unless it's something that's come straight out of China, is pretty dang good quality. Uh, these things here I found out are light barrier controllers. I don't have the light barriers to go with them, so their usability is negligible. They'll probably stay in here when I throw it out. But even then, I mean, these use the little mousetrap style snap-in barrier strips. I don't use them. I use the screw terminal type, so again, you pick and choose what you want. Main reason I got it was for this. It's a Danfoss, Danfoss VLT drive, like a mini drive. But unfortunately, this one only takes 380 to 480 input, three phase. I can't just plug this into single phase and expect it to work, it'll give me a phase error. So this is the kind of thing where I trade somebody for another, like a single phase drive or a motor or whatever. So this is a bargaining chip. This one here, however, is a one horsepower 230 single phase input drive from Delta, which is a fantastic electronics company, I might add. And um, yeah, 240 volts simulated PWM three-phase output that will run smaller motors. Uh, it's pretty much the, the backbone of my workshop right now, my lathe, my mill, um, well both lathes and the mill and random experiments and things all powered off three-phase motors. I don't use single-phase motors anymore. I honestly don't know outside of like handheld tools and things I don't know of a single machine in my shop that just uses a single-phase motor. They're all three-phase. I guess the air compressors, but they're hermetically sealed. So, yeah. That's what some of the stuff you can expect to find in cabinets. Let's have a look at a couple of others. We'll have a look at a cheap Chinese cabinet next. Okay, cheap Chinese cabinet. This one's off a water chiller. Oh, hello puppy. Yeah, this one's off a water chiller. And as you can see, the contactors look kind of chintzy. They, they still work just fine. Not quite as good. Some decent breakers, Fuji Electric. They're all still made in China, but uh, yeah. you get things like step-down transformer, 415 input, uh, down to 220, 240, for obviously the coils, control, thank you, uh, timer, of course, 220 VAC input, you got a timer in 0 to 3 minutes, puppy, you are annoying the crap out of me, get off. <laughs> Okay, so now that puppy's in the workshop, um, yeah, you've got Octel sockets, these timers and things. I don't know how they've locked that one in, but yeah, oops. <laughs> Again, chinzy stuff. They're not held together very well. But yeah, Octel based sockets. Oh, this whole thing's just coming apart. It is in there, but the plastic case doesn't grip it very well. This is the thing you find with Chinese panels, they are not very well made. Um, you can definitely harvest some of this cable tidy off them. I'd recommend that. These really crappy barrier strips like these things. Yeah, Chinese panels you'll find a lot. I find them a lot and quite often they're not worth the time buying. I only bought this because it has fairly decent contactor for the main compressor and the, um, the break is not too bad. It's still a cheap breaker but still it's 50 amp. I think it is, yeah. Not terrible. That's a, I think that's a current reactor or um, phase. What would you call it? Um, power factor correction. I don't know. No, you need capacitors for that. I'm not entirely sure what that does. Unless this whole thing was 220 and it's a four. No, that's not a step down for it. Again, Chinesey stuff. Yeah. So that's what you can expect inside, like an air conditioning panel from a Chinese air conditioner, or in this case, a uh, water chiller. Not the best. Now, switch panels are nice. Everyone needs switches. We get multi-position switches. This one actually has a spring-loaded assist to return to manual. This one's just a standard on-off. Uh, Telemechanique, three-position switch. Indicator lamps, various different styles. You get round ones, square ones, rectangular ones, big domed ones. Depends how old it is. I'll sort of draw a line at how old stuff is these days. This is a pretty old panel. This stuff is like early, I don't know if it's Alan Bradley or no, Izumi Denki, Japan. I can see that, so 
It's still reasonable equipment, but it's getting on. The only modern part I can see is that telemechanic um, drum switch. But still, the indicator lights are kind of cool because they have these neat little lenses on them you can pull off and uh, you can replace that little thing there that says, say it says chiller number one. You can knock that out and actually uh, replace it with something else. Obviously you've got to be able to engrave or mark it, but you could probably get some gel film and print, print them on um, semi-opaque gel and then stick them in there. So they're kind of cool. They're probably the best part of it, along with a few of these switches. Timers, oh sorry, no, they're hour meters. Chiller number one to number four hour meters. Another three position telemechanique switch. Fire alarm, lamps, you name it. Again, it depends on what you want to do and what you want to work with. And, you know, a lot of this stuff will work with low voltage, apart from maybe the lamps if they have their own transformer in them. Yeah, that one's damaged. You can see there's a uh, a 240 down to probably 12 volt or 9 volt transformer inside it for the lamp. So that would ha that would have to be pulled apart and modified to run purely on low voltage, and you'd replace that with an LED anyway. But again, not impossible, and finding button style or lamp styled like this online may or may not be easy. I honestly haven't really checked. As for where this came from, uh, shopping mall. Got Rebel Sport, Priceline, Oxford Shoes, Sports Girl. Yeah, it's, it's Pancake Parlor. <laughs> yeah, it's out of a shopping center. And this, I, I saw what this came off. It was the main master switch panel and main breaker panel. They had the big rack and lock kind of fuse breakers in it. So let's move on to the next one. So internals of panels, controls and switches. Let's look at something fairly new, about seven years old. Yeah, honestly the best thing to find if you've got the room, fully automated equipment. Get pneumatics, all that kind of stuff. But we're gonna look at the control panel. There'll be a separate video on tearing this thing apart later. But I'm gonna get into these control boxes and we'll have a quick squeeze at what they, uh, what they hold in store. Another thing I should mention is uh, a lot of the time some of this stuff's been stored outside for extended periods, probably not stored properly or it was never rated for weather exposure. You might find that some of these, well I've often found that some of these turn into little, they have their own little ecosystem inside and weather system. You get a bit of water in the bottom of it and during the hot cold cycle it condenses on all the colder parts like all the screws and metal parts and basically destroys everything in the box. I mean this one's had a tiny bit of water get in. There's some rust staining on the bottom, but the drive itself has very minimal oxidation on it. I'm gonna open it up and clean it anyway. But uh, yeah, I've opened up some control for cabinets at the scrapyard and yeah, it's like there's been a rainforest kind of ecosystem inside. So you win some, you lose some. The worst one had like two very large, like 10 or 15 horsepower ABB VFDs and a smaller two horsepower one in it, along with a lot of modern switch gear and it did look like it had already suffered a fire at one point, but it also had water get in it for extended period of time and uh, combine that with the uh, caustic salts from the burning PVC, the chlorine, um, that made all the metallic stuff go rusty brown or coppery green. Not good. So yeah, be careful what you buy if it's completely unopened and they won't let you open it. You may be getting something that's already been stripped out or you may be getting something which has had its own little weather system going on inside it for several years and is com completely ruined. So preferably carry a combination key in your pocket. Funnily enough I can't find mine at the moment but it's just a it's a three-ended plastic molded key that suits all the common styles of cabinet lock. Uh, Rittle, uh, ABB, all those different types. Okay now I've got some better lighting I'll show you what's inside a modern cabinet. Well fairly modern this one's about seven or eight years old and these are decent quality cabinets, Rittle cabinets um, but the equipment's kind of neat you've got telemechanic contactors they're very handy, three phase contactors you can use them for single phase, you can even bridge and combine the poles for extra amperage you can get coils for different voltages if you want to buy coils a lot of it's customizable for different voltage ranges relays again, these are 24 volt control relays with the bases multi-pole relays all DIN rail mounted keep the rails 
PLCs, well, PLCs come in a million different varieties and expansion modules and things like RS-232 modules, um, different brands, different software. Some software is free, some's expensive, some you need a special tool for. Uh, drives wise, this is a AC servo drive. You've got an AC motor up in here with a uh, encoder on it. Uh, this guy here. So you've got an AC drive with an encoder. Braking resistor for the AC drive. DC re reverse injection braking. So they're going to get sold together. These are three phase only. I can't use them here. I'll probably sell this and use the money to buy another big uh, three or four horsepower single to three phase drive. Uh, like a bigger version of this, this is a three quarter horsepower single to three phase drive. These things here are one of my favourite things to find in old control boxes because they're infinite, infinitely useful for motorised projects. You can control them remotely or you can control them directly. You've got stop start, you've got a pot in the front of it, or you can use remote control through a HMI or a remote pot potentiometer. It's just a matter of opening them up and uh, wiring onto the uh, analogue bus or the digital bus. So yeah, modern control cabinets definitely pretty good. Old ones have some really neat stuff in them too. It's just a matter of figuring out if it's worth buying it, especially if they won't let you open it. If it looks like it's been out in the weather for a really long time and they won't let you open it, it might be best to walk away. It may well have ended up turning into its own little ecosystem inside and everything's going to be totaled. But yeah, it, it's the luck of the draw. I mean, I've gambled on machinery and lost plenty of times. I get pieces of junk that just end up going back in the bin. I lose money on them or I get stuff that's really useful around the shop or stuff that I can trade like say I can trade this for another VFD or I could trade this for another VFD or even a milling machine depends on how, how expensive this thing is I could probably trade this for a bandsaw I want a wet cutting bandsaw that can cut at least 250 millimeter like round solid stock and the last one I saw on Gumtree was $400 these things here are worth about that much second hand so yeah see what we can do Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, give you some idea what you can find in old control boxes. It's just the luck of the draw, really. Controls and equipment and things like that are varied from maker to maker and country to country. Well, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.